Rory, what inspired you to start your own production company? Well, uh, I was working at NASCAR at the time, and I just wanted to kind of have more control over my own destiny and make more decisions beyond just the creative, like control, not just what I did, but like how it was done. Because uh, working at a company, you know, sometimes you're at the mercy of uh, other people's rules and, and things like that. So um, I remember I went to the accounting department at NASCAR because they would never let us do the budgets. And I really wanted to know how budgets worked. So I, I asked one of the accountants to, to show me how they did a budget. And um, I actually spent like a year there kind of trying to brace myself to leave so that I could learn different things like how do you get your own health insurance and and different things like that. So, um, and then when I left, I, I kind of had two projects waiting uh, to work on. So I, I felt like I had a little bit of a cushion. Um, of course, immediately uh, they went away <laughs> uh, right when I left, but uh, it, it worked out. I remember being literally in my office at NASCAR in the fetal position, like literally like in the fetal position, thinking I made this horrible mistake, but I don't know. I mean, I think, uh, you know, that's what courage is, right? Your, your, your YouTube channel's film courage and courage is being afraid, but moving forward anyway. Right. And, and so we'll get into more because I, I, I love the story. It sounds like it was a real mm -hmm. roller coaster ride and it did work out. It sounds like definitely. How did you know you had everything you needed to really make that leap? You'd been transitioning out. It sounds like planning it for yeah. a year. Well, everything runs its course eventually. So I was at NASCAR. Before that, I started at the NFL. My boss at the NFL, the head of production there, went to NASCAR and he he asked if I wanted to come with him. And at the time I was like 25 years old. So, you know, I don't have children at that point. So there's really nothing to lose. I wasn't a NASCAR fan per se, but I got a lot of opportunities there. It was at a time when NASCAR was probably at its peak of popularity. Dale Earnhardt had just died. And so there's a lot of interest in the sport. And I got to work on these awesome uh, projects there, but I could see that things were kind of going on the, the down slope. So, and I wanted to do other things too. I'd been there for eight years and, and this is, this is a good point to have too. Production had changed. Like when I got out of college, the idea of having my own production company seemed like pie in the sky because it would be so expensive. An avid editing machine was like $60,000. But by the time I left NASCAR, you could get Final Cut for like 20 bucks a month or something. So things had changed. Cameras had been become much more inexpensive and it just became much more user friendly for people to do things. I mean, not even close to what it is now, uh, but back then it just seemed feasible if you were, could plan it out. Can you tell us about the day that you started your production company? Actually, like the money went into your account and what happened after that? Yeah, so I was doing things with ESPN when I was at NASCAR, and I met the people uh, that were doing 30 for 30, and we got along really well. So I was setting up a project about the Manning family, um, specifically Archie Manning, and, and ESPN was really excited about it. We got the okay. Um, and I even started, I gave my notice, to, I gave my notice to my previous job at NASCAR, started going out, doing interviews and all that. And then I got a call from Archie Manning and he's like, uh, hey, Corey, he thought my name was Corey for like multiple years. Um, and he's like, thought it over and I just, I just, just can't do it. It's just not the right time. That's what he said. And he's like, uh, Peyton, man, Peyton, his son, had a neck injury and was coming back. And he's like, it's just, just not a good time. And I even said to him, I was like, you know, uh, I quit my job like, <laughs> I, um, to, to work on this and please. And he's like, well, you know, we can revisit it in a few months, but just can't do it now. And that was that. So I was uh, crushed. You know, I was like, I don't even know what to do because they had put in half the budget in my bank account. 
So I called uh, this guy at ESPN, John Dahl. He ran 30 for 30, told him what happened. And he, and he was very calm about it. He was probably much more used to these things happening than I was at the time. And he said, uh, that's fine. Let's just revisit it in a few months. He said, meanwhile, I have another project, if you're interested in it, about a, a tornado that hit Atlanta during a basketball game. And I told him, I was like, dude, I, I will work on anything. If you want to do the history of boogers, I don't care what it is. You tell me what you want to do. And I'm, I'm, I just need to get paid. So I'm always eternally grateful that he gave me this other project to work on. And then a few months later, I mean, really not that much, because I remember it was actually Mother's Day weekend when he told me, Archie told me this. And by August, uh, I had sent an email to Olivia, Peyton and Eli's mom. Archie called me and he said, let's try it. So it was only like three months later. So timing's everything and it worked out, thankfully. Well, you had talked about in other interviews about how really being skilled at not burning bridges. And, yeah. I, and I know that's hard in the entertainment industry because sure. people can become very fickle for reasons that you don't know behind the scenes and they won't tell you. Mm -hmm. So so how did that lesson, that sounds like you were one of your first lessons or you had already learned that about keeping people in your in your good grace despite what happens? Well, relationships are everything. I mean, I actually think that's the most important, if there's one lesson to take away in any type of creative endeavor is relationships are everything. And you know, people are like, I've heard, well, filmmaking or the film industry is a lot of nepotism or, or political, people hire their friends. It's like, yeah, of course, like, of course you hire your friends. You wanna hire people you can trust. And so, uh, that's true in every aspect of production I've done with who I work with is relationships. So while I was disappointed, I did, I did know that um, timing's important. I had, I've had other big disappointments. I worked on really big projects at NASCAR with big names that we could get into. Um, so I, I've had, I had some, and they fell through and there were like bumpy rides along the way and I was removed from projects and then back on. So. I think I knew at that point that, you know, things happen when they're meant to happen. And even though it can seem like a crushing disappointment at the time, you just have to kind of keep the faith that things will work out. So when Archie said, check back with me, you, you took that in good faith and you did check back with him? Yes. I emailed his wife. So uh, I had her email and I was talking to their other son, uh, Cooper Manning. Uh, you know, persistence is a big part of it. It's, it's a fine line between being persistent and being annoying. So I try not to be annoying, but I try to stay persistent. And uh, sometimes no just means no for now. And people have things in their life going on. I mean, everybody has bad days and sometimes things seem like the world is falling and the next day everything seems like, ah, eh, it's not so bad. So I try to keep that, keep, that in mind and I, I felt like a big sense of relief because uh, ESPN just gave me this other opportunity. Also, coincidentally, I, I, I called NASCAR back because I was supposed to have my last day there and there was like a new regime change and the boss there, this guy, Eric Nyquist, he still runs NASCAR, he's a great guy. I just told him what was going on <laughs> I was like, Hey, uh, I, I needed to keep my health insurance. And I said, hey, if you want, I'll stick around till the end of the summer to just kind of help with the transition of regimes and things. And um, he was like, sure. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, I'm thinking back to something that you asked about um, what was the motivation to leave NASCAR. It, what I can remember it specifically is they made me middle management. Uh, like, so I was like a manager of a department, but I didn't really have that much control. Like had like maybe 10 people. I think my title was senior coordinating producer or something. And I just did not want that as my future. I could see getting, it's almost like a silk coffin where you have a nice job at the time, you know, 30 years old, you can be making a decent salary, you have young children, but I've seen people get trapped and then 10 years, 15 years down the line, 
they're just, they feel stuck. And I didn't want that to happen to me. If I was going to fail, I wanted to fail on my own accord and fail big. You know, if I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail like making a huge disaster versus just kind of like these micro little failures that you can do when you're at a job. And so did you have a moment where it was like a weekend and you envisioned what your life could be if you stayed? Well, yeah. You know what I did is I saw a friend of mine get let go and human resources came to his office, made him pack up all his things supervised him and this was a guy who was very loyal to the company and I just saw the way he got treated so it's almost like a, when you're at a company it's a false sense of security you're getting a, a bi-weekly paycheck and but at the end of the day it's a corporation and it's a lot of times lip service whether they actually care about you or not and sometimes they have to do budget cuts. It's just part of uh, life, you know? I mean, you see it now all the time. You just read about Disney Plus having budget cuts. So, um, yeah, I just did not want that to be me. I did not want to get that that escort out of the building. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, some people were doing everything they could to stay at the company. I was doing everything I could to leave the company. And I think also, too, the people, the bosses there, I mentioned this guy, Eric Nyquist, who's still there. I still talk to him. He runs NASCAR. He's got a great job. I think people respect, respect that you are willing to go out on your own and, and give it a go. I think um, I've only gotten positive feedback from that. 